Today, we'll be discussing analog to digital converters, or ADCs. ADCs are used in many ways, but particularly in sensing applications. While some sensors provide a digital interface, many sensors output an analog voltage. An ADC, as the name implies, converts this analog voltage into digital data that can be used in your microcontroller. Many microcontrollers have one or more integrated ADCs to make simple analog measurements. For example, the Atmega used on the Arduino Uno has a multi-channel 10-bit ADC. Let me show you what that means, and then we'll talk about using discrete ADCs for applications requiring better performance, higher resolution, or more channels than your microcontroller offers. The Arduino makes it really easy to read an analog value. You simply use the analog read command with the desired pin number, in this case, A3. As you increase the voltage, you'll see on the screen here that the value red is jumping up. So right now I'll put 100 millivolts, 0.1 volts, and we are reading about 19 on the ADC. It's jumping between 18 and 19. For a 10-bit ADC, we'll have 1,024 steps that can be detected, 2 to the 10. Our range is 0 to 5 volts, so if you divide 5 by 1,024, you get about 4.9 millivolts per step. So we should see the read value increase every time I increase the voltage by about 5 millivolts, which makes sense because when I increase it to 100 millivolts, we are reading about 20 on the ADC. And that is resolution. This Arduino has six analog inputs, but they all share, or are muxed, to the single ADC. This means that only one input at a time can be used, but you can sequence through the inputs to measure the value on each. The read time is about 0.1 milliseconds, so if I wanted to read the same input very quickly, or alternatively, read different inputs, the delay between each read is about 0.1 milliseconds. This is typically referred to as the conversion rate, or can be represented as the sample frequency. To alternate inputs on the Arduino, I just change the pin number I'm reading. So I used A3, and I also have A5. And as you're looking at the screen, you'll see it's going between 0, which A5 is connected to ground, and 21, which is connected to 100 millivolts. And so that is taking those readings sequentially. Now, what happens if you need more from your ADC than you get with the one in your microcontroller? There are a few factors to consider. One is resolution, which determines your step size. But to double the resolution, you only need to increase the bit count by one. So if I needed steps that are about 2.5 millivolts with a five volt range, I would just need to get an 11 bit ADC. And there are ADCs that go beyond 20 bits, so you can get very small steps. Conversion rate is also important. If you're sensing something that changes very slowly, like the temperature in a home, you can have a very slow conversion rate. If, on the other hand, you need to rapidly detect signal changes, like detecting a short circuit, then you'll probably need a higher speed ADC. There are also different types of ADCs, which would take too long to cover here, but high resolution sigma delta ADCs and high speed successive approximation ADCs are two of the most popular due to the balance they offer between performance and cost. Many discrete ADC ICs are available in modular form to accommodate prototyping or use with platforms like the Arduino. So for a relatively low cost, you can experiment with some of these different ADCs and start to understand the benefits and use cases for each. 